If we went back to 1970, uh, we would find that uh, two-thirds of federal expenditures were national defense and courts, mm -hmm. regulatory agencies. I, I'm not saying these were all good things. Sure. We could argue about them, but they were public goods in some sense. Uh, today, uh, uh, three-quarters of federal spending this year of the federal government will, will be uh, simply income transfers. The very large theme you, you just uh, uh, trenched upon is the kind of is the kind of big thinking that um, uh, you've been associated with for a long time. I mean, combining sort of economic criticism with historical um, facts and with a kind of constitutionalist um, sentiment. Uh, obviously, the decline of the legislature uh, in a regime of self-government is a very profound problem and one that you are, uh, I am happy to say, uh, illuminating. Um, it is a, it's a crisis though in, um, it's a slow motion crisis in a way. I mean there is no, there's no emergency yet at least. But you indicate that in your, in your recent writings on the debt problem and the continuing normalized deficit problem that uh, we may not be that far away from some kind of an emergency or a crisis or an, a, a moment when we, we can't go on the same way any longer. Tell me, uh, say something about, the, uh, about your read of the, def of the larger implications of the debt and deficit problem. Uh, I think that it has, uh, like the administrative state problem, uh, it has intellectual origins, but it also has practical, political, uh, material uh, origins. Uh, the intellectual uh, culprit uh, was uh, Keynes. Uh, Keynesianism was actually a, uh, a, a wonderful idea and contribution during the Depression. Uh, before that, uh, governments had borrowed money in emergencies, uh, uh, wars, uh, uh, when big opportunities arose, the Louisiana Purchase was uh, uh, when Jefferson overcame his constitutional qualms. He paid for it mostly by having the Treasury run off a very fancy looking certificate uh, and giving it to Napoleon as an uh, indication of $11 million in debt. Uh, so we had borrowed money uh, for emergencies and opportunities and uh, Keynes simply made the point uh, that if you have an emergency of an economic nature mm -hmm. rather than a war or a hurricane, uh, it is equally legitimate to borrow money. Government should run a deficit during very bad times. He did that in a world where everybody, including himself, uh, agreed emphatically uh, that the government should normally balance its books. Uh, so he wanted a deficit in bad times and a surplus in, uh, in good times. And there were many refinements to the basic Keynesian idea. But the important thing is it was never tried, ever. We've never tried Keynesianism because once people in politics began thinking when you were putting together this year's uh, budget, instead of we're just going to, we have got this much taxes, and we've got these many expenditures and we've got to make them fit. What people started to think of was today's problems versus tomorrow's resources. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was the intellectual change that uh, Keynes promoted. And there was some legitimacy to it, but man, you're a politician <laughs> and you're thinking, wait a minute. Right. It's <laughs> you know, self-undermining. And especially yeah. Americans, the future's yeah. going to be rich and everything's going to be great, especially if we can get through these terrible problems I'm encountering. So it was a way to relax resource constraints. And it had a dynamic to it, which was once it got going, the public and its representatives got used to the fact that society as a whole was paying fewer taxes than receiving benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that is the world that we are in uh, today. It's a great deal if you can, 20, you can get it. 20, 30% yeah. of federal expenditures 
are being uh, borrowed rather than uh, are being Routinely. borrowed rather yeah. than taxed. Uh, but I do believe uh, that the changes in our politics and the transformation of spending uh, uh, from uh, traditional public goods. If we went back to 1970, uh, uh, we would find that uh, two thirds of federal expenditures were national defense and courts. Regulatory agencies. I, I'm not saying these were all good things. Sure. We could argue about them, but they were public goods in some sense. Uh, today, uh, uh, three quarters of federal spending this year of the federal government will will be uh, simply income transfers uh, to just writing out checks to people or to people's doctors uh, for things that are. Uh, again, I'm not saying good or bad, mm -hmm. but they are not investments in the future. They're current uh, consumption. And, the and that idea, the entitlement idea, uh, is a 1930s innovation, not a 1970s one, although it really, got, it really gets going it towards gets, the end of the 60s. It gets and, going at the end of the 60s. Yeah. But that's a, and that's a second stream, that's a second intellectual cause or, or intellectual problem, you might say, yes. in modern politics. Yes, I agree. Uh, I agree. Uh, but I, but I do not think, and I think that making the arguments uh, uh, about the <coughs> deficiencies, the dangers <coughs> of uh, the entitlement state and of Keynesian balancing, mm -hmm. I think that those are great arguments. But I think that they are not sufficient to rescue us from the straits that we are in, <coughs> because the dynamic is so powerful and it is built into our political system, <coughs> and. Um, Again, uh, I don't. Uh, uh, <clears throat> it's, this is not a rhetorical technique where I'm always <laughs> trying to turn on Republicans. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, 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 George uh, George W. Bush uh, <clears throat> was a champion of an enormous uh, extension of the Medicare program to cover prescription drugs. Um, any insurance program for the elderly ought to cover cover drugs because they're great substitutes for surgical care and they're very effective. Uh, Ronald Reagan passed a drug coverage. Uh, he insisted that it be budget neutral, which means it had to pay for itself with taxes and fees, right. and it, it caused rioting in the streets. And it was repealed less than a year after he left town. And the Republicans learned this, and their drug benefit was financed 75% simply by selling bonds. Mm -hmm. And it tur turned out to be very popular. Uh, but an important part of that incident back in 2002 to, to 2004, the Democrats thought it was going to be very unpopular mm -hmm. because Reagan had tried it and it had been unpopular. Uh, and they were getting ready to campaign against this crazy jury-built new drug program, and there were these fees and so forth. But of course, the fees were a very small proportion of the benefits. Um, <clears throat> and they were wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, it turned out to be immensely popular. This, this shows me that uh, this is not a matter, this business of getting, into the, of getting into the routine of spending a lot more money on current uh, benefits, payments to individuals that we're borrowing uh, it has not been a matter of conscious strategy on either side. It's been within the dynamics of uh, democracy. The Democrats didn't see it. The Republicans did. They were just learning by doing. Mm -hmm. They tried one thing, it didn't work. They tried something else, it was a smash hit. Uh, so, uh, so this is not simply trying to turn, you know, the Republicans are just as bad as the Democrats. I'm making a different point. It's an, inst it's an institutional problem, right. not <clears throat> just an intellectual problem. And we need, uh, 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 in the case of uh, deficit uh, spending, uh, there are some leaders, I'd put Paul Ryan in this category, who understand uh, and who, <clears throat> it w w if it became politically possible, could put us even today, there's time to get on a trajectory mm -hmm. uh, to uh, uh, a path uh, where people can make adjustments in their planning for, uh, for the future, for savings. Uh, we're a very rich country. Uh, and uh, uh, we can avoid the sort of uh, crushing changes uh, that will really defeat people's longstanding expectations mm -hmm. uh, for another uh, 10 or 20 years. After that, it's going to be it's going to be Detroit coast to mm -hmm. coast. It's going to be the Detroit pension program coast to coast. You've uh, you've written that there 
there are three ways out of the debt problem. One is reform of the uh, uh, um, statesmanlike variety you're yes. pointing to. The other is uh, inflation, uh, and the third is crisis. Yes. And which of those are you betting on? Uh, I'm betting on a mix of the three. I think we'll make some reforms, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we will try to bring uh, monetary uh, policy uh, into the game uh, at some point. But there will be some <clears throat> there will be some crises. Uh, the uh, supplemental security program, which is an important part of Social Security, mm -hmm. addressed uh, to um, uh, not to retirement income. Uh, but to disabilities of one kind or another. That has a trust fund uh, that uh, will run dry in two years. Okay? Uh, Social Security uh, has uh, another uh, decade or two uh, to go. The statute says that these programs, once the trust fund is gone, may not spend any money. So that program goes away unless Congress acts. So here's something where Congress can't just sit back and let things uh, cruise, uh, cruise along. Uh, something has to be done. Uh, it will certainly face pressures to combine the two funds, so borrow from Social Security. Uh, but that will be very transparent because the Social Security problem is coming up at us. And if we try to take that money and put it into disability, it's going to uh, move the day of reckoning. Right. I'm getting a little technical here, uh, but uh, these debates are going to get interesting in the short term, yes. no matter who gets elected to whatever branch of government. Mm -hmm.